Okay. So we've looked at the constant dividend where we say Ke equals the O over PO. And we've looked at the constant growth in dividend where we say Ke equals the O 1 plus G over PO plus G. Now note that the O 1 plus G is the same as dividend in a year's time. That's the dividend in a year's time. So now, let's crunch some numbers on how we can calculate the cost of capital for a company. So men's PLC has an issue 40 million, $1.5 dollar shares quoted at 3.52 per share. The ca calculates the cost of capital if I, the company, just paid a dividend. Of 0.8 or a dividend of 80 cents, and then B, the company is about to pay a dividend of 92 cents. So, men's PLC has an issue 40 million, 1.5 dollar, 1.5 dollar shares quoted at $3.5 per share. Calculate the cost of capital if I, the company, just paid a dividend of 80 cents and I, I, the company is about to pay a dividend of 92 cents. Solution. From this question, there is no growth language inside. Hence, we will just go straight that KE equals DO over what? PO. But remember, I told you that the PO we are interested in has to be the X price or what is called X div. It must exclude the dividend. So, the I aspect of the question, we are told that the key word here is this. The company just what? Paid. Now, if the company just paid dividend, then this price is an ex-dividend price. It means it excludes the dividend. It means when you buy the share right now, you will receive dividend because it has just what? Been paid. For that reason, when it comes to the I, KE will be equal to the 80 cents, which is 0 0.80, over the market value, $3.5. Remember, all these things are times 100 because your KE must be in percentages. What do I have?
So the PO cum div is going to be the 3.5 dollars. Then the dividend which is about to be paid, 92 cents, 0.92. So what do I have? Two point five eight cents. So it is now this X D or the X price that I'm going to be using to calculate my K E. So K E will now be still the dividend of ninety two cents over, or let me say zero point nine two over two point five eight times hundred. What we got? Thirty-five. That's it. So that is the first thing you must understand. The language in the question. Just paid. It's about to pay. And then how the calculation was done. So Mansa PLC has one dollar twenty million shares quoted at two point five dollars per share. During the year ended 31st March 2018, the company paid a dividend of $18, sorry, $18 million from earnings of $63 million. If shareholders require a return of 8%, calculate the cost of capital. So how do we calculate the cost of capital for Mansa PLC? Which formula do we use here? Do we use the constant formula or the growth formula? Per the question that we have here. It is the question that will tell us which formula to go for. So what do you think? Can we use this formula? Or we must use the growth formula? The idea is that always, anytime you see something like the company paid a dividend from earnings and you see shareholders require it of return paid quickly, Golden approximation has to come into your mind. For that reason, we're going to be using KE equals DO1 plus J over what? PO plus what? J. We're going to be using the growth formula because of the information. Then, we need to ask ourselves, what do we have in the question? Number one, we are giving the PO, which is the quoted price of the shares, $2.5. Now, since during the year the dividend has been paid already, meaning this is the XD market value, so no P. That's what we are looking for. And that is what has been given to us, no P. Next, what how much dividend was paid? What? 18 million. 18 million. That's huge. For that reason, we must calculate the dividend what? Per share. So we can calculate the dividend. Now I'm going to solve this question in two ways. One way is to calculate the market value of the shares and slash it in and calculate your KE. Or calculate the dividend per share and do it like that. So let's go with the other approach. Let's calculate the dividend per share. What is the formula for dividend per share? Yeah. Dividend paid over what? Number of shares. Ever in do or in do. Dividend paid, how much? 18 mil. What is the number of shares? 20 mil. What do I have? No point. So that is how much dividend has been paid. Once we have the dividend paid per share, that is the DO. 0.9 dollars not cents 0.9 dollars or 90 cents good then once we have the dividend per share the next thing is because of the information we have to calculate the gene the growth rate now the way we calculate gene here is to use Gordon approximation 
So in using volume approximation for the gene, we say G equals R by what? B. Remember that R is the shareholder's required rate of return. So R is 8%. Then B is what? The percentage of profit retained. So look at it. They made a total profit of how much? 63 and they paid a dividend of 18. So profit retained. It's going to be 63 mil by 18 mil. What we got? 45 mil. So if it's the profit retained, then our B will be the profit retained over the total earnings times 100. What do I have? Seventy-one point four percent. Okay. Once I have my R and B, I can calculate my G to be what? Eight percent of seventy-one point four percent. What do I have? Mm -hmm. Five point seven. You got the same answer? Yes. You got the same answer. Okay. So five point seven percent. So now what do we have? We have the XD price, we have the DO, and we have our G. So we can calculate KE to be equal to DO, the dividend of the share. No point nine dollars over. Sorry. No point nine out one plus this one. We bring it in decimals. So when we are bringing this is decimal to be what? Zero point zero five seven. Am I right? Over the market value. Two point five dollars plus zero point zero five seven. What do I have? So times hundred. Forty three point seven five. You got the same thing? Okay, so that becomes what? AKE. So this is one way that question could be solved. So put it down and let me use another method to solve it. Then you will choose which one you will go for in the example where you get it. The other way we could solve this question is to say that, okay, if we have the total dividend, we don't need to calculate the dividend per share. We would rather calculate the market value of the shares. And the number of shares in the company is 20 million. So times the value per share, what do I have? So 20 million times, 20 million times 2.5. 50. 50 million. Dollars. So that becomes the market value of the shares. Remember, the growth rate will still be calculated that way. But this time around, your KE will be equal to the total dividend, which is $18 million out, 1 plus 0 0.057 over the market value you calculated here. 18, sorry, 50 million plus what? 0 0.057. What do we have? It should give us the same answer. You got the same thing? Good. So you will choose in the exam hall which one you will go for. Whether you calculate the dividend per share 
or you get the market value and you use that for your calculation. Either case or either way you go, the growth rate there, there is no other way to calculate it. That is the only way you will calculate it for such questions. Any question on the dividend valuation module? Sorry, the dividend uh, formula for calculating KE. Okay, now there are some limitations in using the dividend to calculate KE. So what are some of these limitations? Number one, especially with the growth rate we are calculating, it's not an accurate growth rate. It is just an estimate we are making. So that is one of the limitations. That a growth rate is an estimate. and not actual growth in dividend. It's just an estimate we are making. That's why there are various methods of calculating the growth rate. So that is one of the limitations. Number two, using dividend to calculate KE, it doesn't take into consideration the risks associated with the business. So this is a theory area. It does not consider the risk associated with the business. So that is a limitation that we can talk about. So the growth estimate is that. Then the third thing is that, remember here we say there is a constant growth in dividend. The word constant growth in dividend simply means that Every year, there will be 5% growth in dividend. But the actual sense is that, or the actual meaning is that, the dividend does not grow at what? A constant rate. So that is another limitation. Dividend doesn't grow at constant rate. So these are some limitations we can talk about in relation to the dividend module using the dividend module to calculate the cost of capital or cost of equity now to combat these limitations there is a third way that we can calculate the cost of equity and that is to use what is called the capital asset pricing module the capital asset 